So here's a small word for you that has stirred many thoughts and wars. Um, it has stirred many emotions, strong emotions. People live and die according to this word. There are many definitions of the word God in our world today. Um, our 20-something children um, have a lot of friends that, that all believe in God, but there are many definitions of, of what God is. One of our goals in this two-year journey is to explore God and everyone has a view on God, but how has God revealed himself? So we want to take a look um, through the two years, and today is one of them, on how God has revealed himself. Now even that can get pretty varied, right? Lots of people interpret how God has revealed himself in a lot of different ways. So we're going to look at one way that... Um, that resonates with us and hopefully it'll resonate with you. If it doesn't, then this won't be a very good module for you and you'll just forget about it. But for a lot of people, it seems to have, it seems to make sense. And maybe some of you have looked at it this way and maybe some of you haven't. But if you can just kind of open your mind this morning and consider <coughs> this and see what, uh, what sticks with you and what, maybe what makes sense now now that you've taken a look at this particular perspective. Okay, let's pray together. God, thank you that you are beyond our scope, and yet you are right here with us, even inside us. You want to be known. You're not someone who has existed a long time ago and has faded away. You're not someone who's on a distant planet and we can't get close to. You You want to be close, you want to be known. And yet, to know you, wow. So God, we pray that um, maybe today you would reveal to us more of yourself at least in an understanding or maybe even an experiential way that you could talk to us about who you are. Because what we know of you, Jesus, we love. We love you, God. Yes. And so to know you is, is a deep longing in our heart, a dream, a desire in our heart. And as the psalmist said, we want to follow you, follow hard behind you. We want to follow heart and soul. And so, God, we pursue you, although we know it's really you pursuing us. In Jesus' name, amen. So in his book, um, The Threefold Art of Experiencing God, Christian Schwartz. Does that ring a bell for anyone? Christian Schwartz, Threefold Art of Experiencing God. It's good. So this will be new to most of you. He demonstrates a thread of revelation, and he uses three colors to do it. Green, red, and blue. So he says, typically, this is how we've come to see experience and understand God. So why green, red, and blue? Well, they're primary colors. And green, and they each represent something. Green represents creator, earth, God as creator. Another perspective is red, a red lens, which represents blood in that Jesus Christ died and came as a deliverer. And so that is another perspective. And then there is blue, which is waves and wind and the Holy Spirit 
as God's presence on earth. So we have green, red, and blue, creator, deliverer, presence. This experience of God in a threefold manner, um, well, we're used to that, right? Because God is Trinity. And so in most of our upbringings, we've been told about the Trinity and maybe we've even come at this time in our lives, our walk with God, we've even come to understand it, you know, uh, to a certain degree. You know, the whole water, steam, ice thing, right? Water, liquid, water, solid, water, vapor. You know, that's how we explain the Trinity to our six-year-old. Um, so we're, we, we've come to understand this threefold manner of God. So what Christian Schwartz does is he digs into this even a little further and says, actually, God often, maybe even most of the time, reveals himself in threes. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. This is how God reveals himself in relation to us. He's our Father, there's the Son, and then there's the Spirit. This is how we see God in position to us. God above us, God among us, or God with us, and God in us. See, we've heard all those terms, but they do project a certain perspective on how we're looking at God at that moment. God above us, God with us, God among us, and God in us. God in three, in three colors. So Schwartz writes, just as light falling through a prism splits up into various colors, we humans perceive God in various ways. It's just natural for us to do that. The organization Christian Schwartz started was natural church development. And so he, he feels that there's a natural way that we just see God. And it's in these various ways. Some see him primarily through the green color, others blue or red, and yet it's the same God concealed behind it. So that's what, he, that's what he's written. It's the same God concealed behind it, but it depends on how we're looking at him. Now, is it possible for someone who sees God primarily red to all of a sudden move over and see God through blue or move over and see God through green? Well, he would say, not only is it possible, but that's... Part of what our growth is that we need to see God holistically and primarily these three ways will help us see God as a whole he then attributes different characteristics to each of these colors explaining that these characteristics also apply to God and they're all in threes so this is how God often communicates there's the green perspective, which is the command, you shall. So God comes as Father, Creator, you shall, command. Then there is, you may, there's the invitation. So Jesus comes as the deliverer, sacrifices <coughs> himself, and says he's come for all people. So here's the invitation, you may. Then there is the blue. He comes as the wind and the waves and the, the spirit. And this is the validation you can, he empowers. Because he's in us, the blue is focused on God in us, then there's the, the validation you can because Christ in you. And all of them are true, but we tend to see things primarily through certain perspectives. Again, here's the three realities of, that we tend to see God in. <clears throat> so gr green being cre creation and all that. God is evident in nature. P 
people see God in the order and the beauty and the vastness of nature. From red, it's historical. God has revealed himself historically. He's always been, always will be. Israel, where we come from, our heritage, we're grafted in. Um, the Bible is, is part of that historical perspective of God. God gave us the Bible, so the Bible becomes extremely important. And there is the blue. We know God exists through personal experience. So when people ask, well, how do you know? They say, well, I just, I just know. I've, I've felt him. So all that tends to be um, the experiential inward, what God's doing inside. Here's the three sources of knowledge of God. Green being creator, the source is more science. And so people looking at God through this um, will pay attention to science and discoveries and, and what science is doing with God and, and they'll get involved in those kinds of things. In the red, which is more deliverer uh, and Bible, then scripture, um, the Bible, is the source of knowledge and so in this perspective you'll hear people say i don't care what anyone says i just believe the bible but the blue person will say mm, that's not a full picture yes the bible but there's the presence of god there's the experience you can't just read something you have to experience him and the green person says oh you guys are all fuzzy you got to go out and actually prove it and, and see the proof that God has given that he exists. Swartz also identifies three major segments of Christianity that have developed over the centuries that have kind of flown the certain flag of one of these colors. So it flows out of this and explains how they tend, how we tend to box God in and cluster around the three parts with the flag flying above us. They find this very interesting because you can see how over time people have grouped themselves into these things. So it's kind of what this looks like then. So here we have God in a box, <laughs> which tragically is what we tend to do. Break the box. Yeah. 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 But this is what we tend to do over the, over the years. Um, and this is this is Christian Schwartz's labels. Okay, you may not like the labels or whatever, but we're just saying, here's what he, it gives us a starting point. So the top he calls the liberals. Sometimes we may call them mainline, if, if that's a term familiar with you. But they advocate for creation and humanity. They focus on peace and justice, art, liturgy, science, those things you can see and hang on to. Okay, Th that's what um, that's what this segment is fo is focused on, and so it's not so much about personal experience or what you're getting out of the Bible or whatever. It's 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 what's happening in the world, what's happening in nature, how we're destroying the planet. This is a perspective. Then there's the evangelicals. They advocate for Jesus as the word of God, the expression, the Bible. He's the word and expression of God. So evangelism and proclamation of that truth, helping everyone know the truth, is of utmost importance. 
Then you have the charismatics. They advocate for the reality of the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And this is evidenced in things like spiritual gifts, signs, and wonders. And that's what they'll focus on. So which one's true? <laughs> and that's his point, right? That's his point. Like, But if we looked at it honestly, and you've probably already plugged yourself into one of these colors, how have we conducted ourselves and even how we approach the other colors? We box God in, and then we pick a corner of the box to sit in. So we become very familiar with our corner of God. So much so that we actually believe it's the best corner, that it's actually the right corner. Over time, we develop attitudes against people in the other corners. Even though each one is advocating for a true expression of the Trinity. Now, probably not you guys, because you guys are the cream of the crop. <laughs> but all the other Christians, this is what they do. So, how does this happen? Well, liberals, and I'm sorry for labels. Like, if you're like, I hate labels. But what else? The green people. <laughs> Which is a label. Yeah. The green people. When they no longer are concerned about the truth claims of Jesus, and we've seen that, haven't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. They're no longer concerned about the truth claims of Jesus, even questioning the deity of Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. nor the presence of the Holy Spirit, because that's just too far out there. And that Holy Spirit is actually the one who leads us into all truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. They end up in syncretism. Syncretism is watering everything down in order to create a pleasant mixture of religion. So you water everything down, you bring it down to the lowest common denominator on what you can handle and what's good for humanity. We're all one. You know, we all like that, that sort of thing. Now, as I say that, you know, some of you have tingles go up your spine, like, oh, that's horrible. But remember, all this, there's a truth in, in this. And so it's, we tend to just cut them off and say, green people are, are not right. They're, they're no good for us. But I'll leave it there. Sorry, the difference between syncretism is the watering down and Watering down in, in order to create a pleasant mixture of religion. All, all faiths are the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. All paths lead to God. Right, yeah. yeah. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha. Yeah. Pick yeah. your pick. Yeah. No, pantheism would be the everything is God. The tree everything is God. Is so God. Is God. Yeah. Yeah. But they'll do that too. So, you know, yeah. If you get too far in the green, you worship the rocks. The trees and the, and the river, but you they think, will start with there is one God, it's just we're all headed for the same God, yeah. Right. You synchronize everything, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Would you summarize again their, their strength, please? <laughs> <laughs> Having trouble with this, <laughs> yes. the idea that um, we have a responsibility to creation and to humanity that that um, we can see God and his handiwork in nature um, God we can connect with God through creation the heavens declare the glory of God we can see that and we can resonate with it not only that but God's given us responsibility here and we need to take care of things and take care of each other. Now, obviously, if that's all you do, no, I'm not going to say that. 
So. <laughs> Would you say this was would be like where like intellectualism kind of fits in more of the head knowledge? Well, it is based in science, so that could be. Yeah, yeah they they want like like we just said they want to prove it, and just because you feel it or just because you read it in a book doesn't prove it. So so we need to get out and, and actually prove it. Not all, not all those people who want to prove it through science are wackos. Right. Like, there is mm -hmm. evidence, and they, and they want to find that. It's just when, like Dan said, when you go too far with these things. Mm -hmm. so, so the problem here is there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Not necessarily right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. We'll get to that in a bit. Okay, when evangelicals, so listen up. <laughs> when evangelicals become more concerned about correct doctrine, orthodoxy is the glory of being right. Ortho, doxy, that word means the glory of being right. When evangelicals become more concerned about correct doctrine to the exclusion of the personal presence of the Holy Spirit and forfeit genuine love for humanity, which they say they do. They love humanity, they love all people. But when they forfeit that for correct doctrine, well, they end up in dogmatism or legalism. Mm -hmm. They become legalistic. Now we're talking extremes, right? Please don't understand that I just told you you're all legalists. <laughs> you're all trapped in legalism. Uh, some of you maybe. Maybe you will have a revelation this morning that says, I am too much of a legalist. I need to move somewhere. Um, and that's, that's all we're doing is, is saying at the extreme, in the far bottom right corner, that's, that's where this can lead and we all know people like that. For some charismatics, now some of you are going to enjoy this because you always knew this. <laughs> <laughs> For some charismatics, their desire for personal spiritual experiences block out the standards of scripture. Mm -hmm. And they'll even block out the condition of the world around them for their own personal spiritual experience. So it's not so much what's happening around the world. That's their problem. And it's not so much what's happening in the, in the world because it's going to burn anyway. So the real importance is what do you experience personally? But that results in irrelevant spiritualism. Now, spiritualism doesn't sound so bad. But it is in this context to the extreme where that is all that you're focused on. And it becomes irrelevant because you don't care about people or the world, or what's going on around you. All your focus is in inside. So then you get this. Each group looking at the world and faith through their stained glass. By themselves, well, the picture just isn't very pretty. I mean, who wants that hanging on their wall? You can't even see things as they really are. That's because we weren't meant to exist by ourselves with only our perspective. That is why when you are in the red section and you read some of Scripture, that doesn't make sense. You, why would 
God say this? Why would Jesus say it that way? And it doesn't make sense to you, so you skip over that verse. Maybe it's because it's a blue one or a green one. And maybe you should go back to that and take a look at it from a different perspective and see what God was getting at or revealing about himself. Each person brings himself to the picture. So in looking through our lenses, there's also our experiences. I became, I came to Christ at the age of 17. I had been to a church once before that, and now it's because I got duped by my um, by my scouts leader who lost his location of where we were meeting so he borrowed a church that was the only time I was in a church and then had, I had no idea about who Jesus was or what God was or anything like that when I came to Christ that fall I came to Christ in the summer of 79 that fall I went to Bible college Bible college is where I learned David and Goliath and all the stories. Drove the other students crazy because I kept interrupting. What? David and who? Who was this guy? Because <laughs> I just, I had no idea about any of this. But I was trained. And I was groomed. And I was totally red. I, I grew up spiritually feeling sorry for the green people because they had missed it so badly and afraid of the blue people. And now, well, now for the last few years, I realized that was a disservice to me. I, I, I grew up with one perspective and uh, I had friends who were kind of in the others, but always felt they were a little off and then, you know, I didn't hang around with them really because maybe they wouldn't rub off on me. And I, and I, and I feel badly about that. I wish I had grown up a little differently, more of a whole perspective. But when you bring those kinds of training, upbringing, schooling, all that into this, then you, you tend to see it through one color. But when you, this is why I believe in community so much, because when you have people coming from different and you respect and honor each other and learn from each other, then you can bring it together, right? And it actually forms more of what the picture was to be like. Yes. And so can a red person like me truly be a blue or a green, can I actually be purple? Can I, can I move towards the center? Well, I think I have, but it's, it's been a deliberate journey. So are you starting a new denomination? <laughs> Some would say I already have. <laughs> the house church network is just, for me, is part of that journey where we're, we're deconstructing some of this. And on a different journey, we, I was just going to say something that um, sounds pretty red. <laughs> I was just going to say, all we care about is Jesus, right? But that sounds, but, <laughs> but you know that the experience of Jesus and how Jesus interacted with the world, Jesus changed the world. He literally changed the world because he cared about it. Um, he didn't come to destroy the world, but he came to save it, all that sort of stuff. So that's that's the journey. And so I believe we've moved closer to that center. But, um, but it's, it's been deliberate. It hasn't just happened. So what do you think? You talk now. What's, what's your experience? Is, is this making sense? If you disagree with all this, I'll just write Christian Schwartz and say you're up. You know, you, you have no idea what you're talking about, and it doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother us at all. Although I just said, you know, it's been part of my experience. But what's been your experience? What do you think about this? And if you can, 
where do you put yourself and where are you headed? Where you may be here, but where where's your attention? Yep. Yeah, I I think this is so good. Um, it it seems like to camp in just one of these circles is an imbalance of um, an imbalance of how we are to <clears throat> really know and live out and understand true faith or true Christianity. Um, in my background. I've shared this actually with Dan and Ann. <clears throat> um, I, I feel like I've been in so many different denominations, which I'm actually really thankful for because my parents were traveling musicians. And I got to see it all from the most extreme charismatic um, to the most extreme liberal mm. part of it um, and mostly evangelical though. <clears throat> but um, you can see the danger of the extremes Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I know what it's like to know that danger. And I'm, again, I'm thankful for that. Um, and so this is just such a great way to really help me to communicate this and understand it in, in this illustration. Right. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. Well, and please, <clears throat> please remember we are talking extremes. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> exactly. If you, if you are still in the red, but but you're moving towards there, you know, we're talking the extremes. So not everyone in the red is a is a dogmatic liberal, you know, trapped in their corner sort of thing. I believe I was, but I've been on a journey. I can relate with your journey a little bit, John. Sorry. Um, I'll put up some labels there whenever I grew up Baptist. Okay. And uh, it was red, red. Red, red, mm -hmm. red, red. You know, let's fly the red flag. Yeah. And it was wonderful. And I learned lots of scripture. Yeah. You know, tons of uh, those little uh, recipe cards. Uh, I remember my grade four uh, Sunday school teacher from September till June. And uh, I got every one of those recipe cards. And they, I got them all. And I got to go to McDonald's. So I <laughs> memorized those recipe cards. And I, and I love it. You know, and I love McDonald's too. But anyway. <laughs> And a, a lot of those recipe cards, those scriptures, I remember they're to this day, and that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, as I've grown, uh, I think Rocky Mountain College um, really helped to bring some more blue, some more green. I think they were very that college, not to you know fly the alma mater flag, but I will anyway. Um, they brought in professors that were red, green. And blue and I was just like for my first year I was like oh you rattled my cage you green person yeah you blue person oh and then as I went along it wasn't so much cage rattling I got out of my cage out of my god box yeah you know my red box I guess yeah. it. and it just yeah I started it and then I went to Whitewood Saskatchewan to pastor for 13 and a half years and met some really biblically based charismatic people um and I was like Oh, you guys aren't weird. Mm -hmm. You guys don't, you know, scream at me and throw hamburgers that I experienced in one particular church. So anyway, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was screamed a sermon for a whole hour. I just I won't mention the charismatic church. And then he threw McDonald's hamburgers. It was the weirdest experience. <laughs> it was really strange. Anyway, but I, I had a very holistic uh, charismatic experience in Whitewood, Saskatchewan. And I tag teamed uh, youth pastor training there. And it was just a wonderful experience. We saw our, I was saying something last night, I uh, walked well, in Others said to myself and the Pentecostal minister worked together. And we saw a youth group grow from 15 to 60 in five years. That was awesome. And to see <laughs> the spirit move, right, in a, a very balanced way. So that's, and then right to the present moment, two days ago, I experienced this. Yeah. Uh, I went from the Evangelical Missionary Church to, to back to the Baptist Church, uh, Faith Community Baptist sort of. Pastor now, and uh, it's not, it's Baptist in name only. There's probably about 5% of the congregation that's actually died in the wool Baptist. Mm -hmm. The Reds, so to speak, I would say. But uh, they were preaching, I was preaching, and after this, this sermon, uh, one, I, I touched on probably almost all the areas. I was preaching about Jesus, so you yeah. don't have to touch all these areas. Yeah. And I had one comment after the sermon that said, 
well, you know, I heard the, the intellectual side of things, you know, kind of the, um, we're working as a church right now through a Regent University College, a uh, small group curriculum called Reframe, maybe some of you have heard of it, but, uh, and there's a lot of intellectualism in, in that, and so one person kind of picked out the intellectualism, and then another person said, oh, that, that sermon pastor was really Baptist, and I, I don't know if I really care for that Baptist sermon he just preached, <laughs> and so, okay, you know, but uh, it's very interesting to see, you know, and then there's other, other Sundays, yeah, there's more, and so, I, and I've, I kind of was, I don't know, uncomfortable with the attention for a while of this whole thing. Right. But the further I get to the center, I don't really care anymore because I, I want to, you know, not that I don't care for people, but that I just want to have that balanced perspective. Of, and there's sometimes you lean one way more than the other in certain circumstances. But it's, yeah. It's uh, the, uh, the wonderful immenseness of God calls for us to, to live in that tension. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why some verses bother us. Yeah. If, if we're, even if, even the Bible, even though it's, we said it was in the red, it's, it's multicolored, right? It the, is. the Bible is. And it will have all this in it because it's the expression of God. Yeah. I well, know even in the sermon on Sunday, I noticed people's faces. And I talked about Jesus' mighty deeds, his healing, which tends to be more blue. Right. And then Jesus many words, which tends to be more red. And I saw very different reactions. Some of the, the Baptist people, when I talked about Jesus mighty deeds, what? <laughs> Healing? Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that all people, you know, are cessationists or the Baptists or whatever. There's another big uh, theological word. It just means that, you know, you, all the scripture gifts ended at the death of the apostles. But that, uh, yeah, and then you talked about uh, Jesus, Jesus mighty words, and it's like, yeah, 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 preach it. Yeah. So it's and there has to be balance. And so yeah. it's, it's yeah. This is very real to me. Every every week, very real. So, thanks, John. Yeah. Others, what do you think? Well, that's interesting because I I grew up green. Okay. And I became a Christian. I'm totally blue, and my husband's totally red. Okay. And that really helps me because I even question sometimes if we pray to the same God. Because mm. there's such a difference mm -hmm. in our experience in God. I'm so blue. And I'm saying, honey, don't, you know, you're missing something here. Are, you, are we praying to the same God? I come God's not revealing himself to him. He's revealing himself to me. Mm. And so it's, this helps me. It's like, okay, he's normal. <laughs> 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 And we have a hard time even praying. Like it's we're praying so different. I'm thinking, yeah. are we praying to the same God here? I'm just so full of of God's presence and and, and overwhelmed and awe. And he's so yeah. I am so bad. <laughs> 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 but he grew, he grew up like that. that my prayers and help please reveal yourself, and so he can share. Can even with our kids the testimony and the, to the children about. How are you? How is God speaking? Instead of you speaking out, yeah. how can you just share how God's working in your life instead of being so different? Yeah, yeah. 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 You're, you're teaching and sharing with our kids that way, so we balance each other well. I guess that way. So mm -hmm. as, as, as a unit, as yeah. a marriage, maybe we complement each other well to, to minister to our children and stuff. But that helps me understand, understand where where he says so there's hope. For me now, I grew up green. I'm very blue, and I'm craving the red. Okay. So my second half for me says I need to go into the red now yeah. to bring that point yeah. to mind because that's that's lacking. Great, so great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what's fascinating, Anne, is when you when you kind of have this in your mind and you hear people pray because they will pray with, from their perspective. Yeah. And so, and and sometimes you'll see the the battle going on, and even I like I've been a part of that battle in prayer. So a person will be praying about all we care about is the word of God and, and the Bible and, and God lead us into truth. And, and if it, you know, if it hurts people, that's okay. It's offensive. We need to be, so they're praying that way. And then someone else or me will come and bring the other side prayer. So 
even in that we're praying from our from our perspective and you can hear it in people's prayers okay that's that's where they're coming from in their prayer or in their theology Could you comment on, on, a, on a statement that God is not limited to our theology? Hmm. Well, and key that I think for me, this is, that is kind of what we're talking about. And that is the challenge is that if we have trouble with what we've just heard, can we at least agree that God is bigger than any of us have experienced? Can we agree that he is more than what we know? If you can't agree with that, well, then I, I'd be fearful of where you are. <laughs> because then you have God in your box. Then you have yes. God in a box. Yeah, that's, right. So. that's right. But if you can accept the fact that God's bigger than my theology, God's bigger than what I know and what I've experienced, then there's always a there's always a path for me to to grow and to and and for for me keith that's actually a, a huge relief that that's that's a blessing i love the idea that there's this huge kingdom and i get to just be a child and run around and explore wherever i want to i i haven't got this all figured out there's so much more that i and even in, even in heaven, some people say, you know, when we get to heaven, the, the blinders will be off. We'll no longer see dimly. We'll see clearly. I think then immediately, like all of a sudden we get to heaven and all of a sudden we know everything. I think a few million years we'll, we'll, we'll eventually learn some more. <laughs> but anyways, that's just, that's not my theology. That's just craziness. So. And one more question if I may. Yeah. What is the risk of that statement? Is there a risk? Is there a danger in that statement? That God's not limited to our theology? What do you guys think? Comment. God is not limited to our theology. So God is not limited what we know of him. Right. I guess the only thing that comes to mind is um, God won't contradict his word. So if you're having an experience or if you're in your in, in some of these areas, if you're if you're saying that the spirit is revealing something to you that is contrary to the word of God, mm -hmm. um, there's a danger, I think, in just saying God's big, he can do whatever he wants, and we need to just sort of be um, free to believe whatever, or I don't know. There's, I think there's maybe that's a little bit of bread coming out in me, but I just I think everything needs to be in balance with each other and not just extreme in either way. So, in our theology, if we can embrace the balance, um, but still, God's not going to contradict His character or His word. In that, I think we need to hold strong. Um, so, is it possible, Shiloh, that God may contradict our understanding of that <clears throat> truth? Because we will we will approach that truth probably from a certain perspective and within our limitations. Yeah, of, like we have a limitation mm -hmm. of what we know. Yeah. And, and so what would look to us like a contradiction within the limitation of what we know may not be, will not be a contradiction if we knew what God knew. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, I think God has to be beyond the limitations of our theology. Because our theology is limited by the human mind by what the human being knows and can understand and can rationalize. And we're talking about a being that did creation. That's right. 
So let me go on the other side now. Then how do you know what's right and what's wrong? How do you know what truth then is? I think we need orthodoxy. And I think it's something we, we can uh, <clears throat> emphasize orthodoxy to the point of dogmatism, as you just said. Mm -hmm. But I think that if orthodoxy doesn't feed what's called orthopraxy, how we live our faith, then our orthopraxy or it isn't even orthodox at all. We're just wishy-washy everywhere. So there has to be some guidelines, and that's from what we know of Scripture, what we understand of God's Word, it is a, there's guideposts, and that, yes, I agree with Shiloh, that, uh, you know, God's Word, you know, He never contradicts, right? But that, does God work <coughs> outside of His Word, or, or beyond, you not outside, because that kind of sounds contradictory. Right. But uh, in partnership, yeah, he works in partnership, mm -hmm. but it, it's beyond our understanding. Like the prophet said, God's ways are higher than our ways and past finding. Like, yeah, there's we just can't we can't find them. No, the see, more, that's yeah, see, that's difficult. Then, Joseph, my ways are higher than yours. Mm -hmm. Well, then, how do I know I'm on the right way? Then, how do I know I'm even in the right place mm -hmm. if if I believe where I am, mm -hmm. but you're saying you're higher? then how do I know where I am? So I think here's, here's where I've come to on this is, I believe it's right to have a set of beliefs, things that you just fully believe and you're ready even to die for. I'm gonna die on this hill. Jesus is the son of God and he is who he said he is. I'm gonna die on that hill. But, if there's other things that I fully believe, I always give God veto power mm -hmm. to say, how can I say this? I believe God works with all of us. He knows all of us. And so when you, when you study Jesus' life and scripture and you come to a belief, I believe he's okay with that. Even, even if there's some growth you need to have in that, in that belief. If, if someone can think of an example of what I'm trying to say, then speak up. Women on the elder board. Is that one? Um, I just, I, that that's a little because controversial. Because it's something that yeah. is coming up in our church right okay. now. Okay. And number one, we've learned the number one reason for a church split. <laughs> And it's, it's a verse in the Bible, and some are seeing it one way, some are seeing it another. And right. for me, I'd so, be okay whatever a church comes to. I'm not going to, it's not a hill I'm willing to die on by mm -hmm. any means. Right. But so 60 years ago, if that was a belief in the church, the church still had purpose and did well. So it seems like God was okay with that, yeah. even though, hmm. You know, women can be on an elder's board. Say God thought that. But this is where the church settled, so he worked with them anyway. But now he's he's drawing that out. I remember burning, when I became a Christian, I was told to burn all my secular music. So we had a bonfire in front of my house. We had an acreage. We had a bonfire and burnt all my music. Ten years later, I was like, <laughs> but that was because I wanted to really do this. I was serious about this decision. And I was told that's the right decision. So I did it with all my heart. Ten years later, I think, what the, like that, that doesn't make any sense to me. But so I, so when God saw me do that, was he pleased with that? Or did he go, honey, ooh, you don't have to burn all that music. <laughs> I think he was pleased with your zeal. Yeah, yeah like he would say, sure. yes, yeah. you know, I know you're doing this because you want me. Yeah. So good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in 10 years, I'm going to show you that that was kind of a stupid thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I allow God to show me those things. 
I don't know if all that's making sense, yeah, but yeah, yeah. there's a there's a progression, there's a growth. And what I believed here, God let me believe that, but eventually the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth, which is why we're always growing. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask about uh, the Okay, some of you that haven't spoken up, you don't have to, but I just want to make sure we're hearing from from when you I folks. Speaking of Christian, I I was in an evangelical free church and very much kind of on the border of the the red and the blue, but my was always encouraged to experience God, but the gifts didn't exist. Like the the more signs of wonder the gifts didn't exist, and weren't not to go too far into the charismatic camp because they're weird. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it was really, it was a funny balance I had there. And I went to a very red Bible college and warned, again, not to go into the, the blue. And I was very confused. And I never understood the green. This is so helpful to understand the green better. So, and mm -hmm. within the last 10 years, I've just really, God opened me up so much to his spirit and um, the things he's doing around me and being able to experience him more. So it's been really dynamic journey for me. Yeah. Cool. cool. Anyone else before we take a break and move on? Sure. Well, this is kind of, this kind of folds in this morning. I was uh, reading, I should go grab the Bible because it'll say it better. But um, Corinthians, First Corinthians, I've been reading that one a lot because it's been speaking to me as a yeah. book for our times. And it's not easy because same thing about contradiction, mm -hmm. uh, women stuff. And, and I read the commentary before that. And the very last sentence is, Know, are you willing to rest in the fact that there are things that you can't know the answer to right now, right, right or wrong? Mm -hmm. we, we demand to know, what's the answer to this? Or what about this? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just kind of, and I'm con pretty convinced as we go through this, we talk about, for me, you know, I talk about maybe moving into other parts. The, the goal is to move to surrender is in the middle. Like, yeah. And so it's mm -hmm. not about um, going to learn. It's, it's, for me, mm, the barrier that's good. surrendering yeah. and moving to the middle and not getting too far yeah, that's good. into the other camps. And I struggle with surrender. Me <laughs> <laughs> too. Mm -hmm. And isn't that the, like the, the beautiful thing in this, with whatever we have trouble with, whatever we don't, what I, what I love about this is that God is so gracious. He lets people be and learn where they are, knowing that there's a fuller version of him that he just is gently leading us towards. And he'll use people, he'll use experiences, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll guide us towards that. Um, if, we, if we want him to, and we said it's, it's not a passive thing, Surrender seems passive, but it, it's actually intentional, right? 
And so moving towards the center is intentional. Intentional surrender to where God, the perspective God wants you to have. And, and he's in charge of that, which is really good. And I just, I just love him for, for just treating us so lovingly like little children. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up very red. Father was missionary, very much the Bible center of Jesus, very um, against extremism in the blue and just riding off the green. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that's, that's the truth. And then um, when I went to seminary and did the doctoral work, we, in the preaching class, the professor said, I want you all to pick a church that is very different from you and go and attend that church one Sunday and write up a report. So I thought, okay, what's the most opposite of what I would think? Oh, that'd be Catholic, you know, because they're way off. <laughs> um, so a friend and I decided we'll go to we'll go to a Catholic church in a nearby city. So we did some research and found out there was a, a big Catholic church in that city. So we drove up, and I had all my expectations. <laughs> that, you know, these liberal churches are dead. And, you know, hardly anybody goes there. Well, the parking lot was full when we drove up. <laughs> and uh, as we got out, well, I noticed all these families, moms and dads and kids, all walking hand in hand to the church. Like, what? Young people are coming to this church? <laughs> <laughs> so we walk in and then we they identified right away that we were Yes. They had people <laughs> greeting at the door. What, really? So we were put into this newcomer's class. There was 80 people in this class. We were jammed in a room about this size. Hmm. And the priest comes in with his rope and says, oh, okay, we're going to hear it now. And he says, well, welcome. I just want all of you to know that if you're a part of our Holy Trinity or whatever it was, I want each of you to know Jesus Christ is personal Lord and Savior. Mm. <laughs> Does he <even> know that? <laughs> oh my goodness. We go to the service and the liturgy and they're, you know, standing up and down all different things. But boy, the music was really interesting. It was right out of the Psalms. And I was impressed with that. You know, our songs are that scriptural. <laughs> Beautiful songs. And then the guy got up and preached the most amazing sermon. Mm -hmm. And I said to my friend, he could come speak at my church. He's really good. I, that's good. So by the time I had finished the service, my paradigms mm -hmm. had been shattered. My prejudices mm -hmm. had been shattered. Mm -hmm. To realize God was very present in that church. Yeah. Yeah. And same with blue expressions. God mm -hmm. is there. And he was just helping me grow up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get out of my little box mm -hmm. and enter into his larger kingdom. Yeah. And it is a joy mm -hmm. to be able to see God in way more places than I ever thought. Mm -hmm. So I've loved my journey to the middle. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, we talk about sacred pathways. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anybody familiar with sacred pathways? Well, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna venture into that a little bit more, but more on a personal level. Like, how do you connect with God? Because even though you may be in the red section, you may really connect with God in nature. You know, you go to the mountains, and if you if you realize you're a little dry, then the thing you think of is going to the mountains and going for a hike, because you know you God will refresh you. So there are those personal kind of ways we connect with God too. So Dan will we'll talk about uh, those tomorrow. It's all about our relationship with the maker of heaven and earth, which is fascinating. All right, take a break. If you can take uh, seven and a half minutes, that would be great. 
and uh, we'll get and we'll See, get you, started. You should show the graphic going to the middle here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so the idea is we go to the mid middle, and that's uh, that's really an expression of the Trinity. Because mm. um, if if we're not orbed like that, and we're off, then we actually aren't experiencing the full relationship of the triune God. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's our loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So take six and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll get started on the next thing. Thank mm -hmm. you.